Hi, my name is Chris Anderson. I'm here at Gateway Regional High School. And I'm going to give you a quick tour of our classroom and focus on some of our biotechnology projects. This is a tech ed class, you could also call it pre-engineering. And in biotechnology, we're studying the mix between man-made things and living things. Our students are building systems for growing plants and fish at the same time. And these systems are called aquaponic systems. They all fall under the realm of biodynamic farming, which is a farming technique where uh, things are sustainable and organic. So in our aquaponic systems, the fish are going to naturally produce waste in the water, and that water is going to be used to grow plants. In turn, the plants are filtering the water for the fish, and that complete cycle is called the nitrogen cycle. When you first enter the classroom, you can see that the hydroponics and aquaponic systems are kind of the centerpiece inside the room here. This is a 1,000 gallon livestock tank. For the past four years we've been farm raising fish, which you call aquaculture. But when you mix the fish tank water and grow plants with it, we call that aquaponics. Let's take a look inside and see the fish. This year we're trying something new. We've done tilapia in the past and koi. This year we're doing catfish. All right, these small fish you can see here that are blending in with the river rock are yellow bullhead catfish. The big albino catfish is a channel cat. And there's another channel cat swimming around back there that's the same size. But also blending in. There she is. Gorgeous. Now the fish tank is going to be full of fish waste all the time. We don't have any carbon filters attached to this. What we do have though is this drum we call the bug jug. And the bug jug is full of rocks and styrofoam bits and pieces and clay pebbles. Lots of good surface area for denitrifying bacteria to attach themselves to. The denitrifying bacteria breaks down the fish waste in the water and turns it into a consumable form of nitrogen for the plants. Denitrifying bacteria also live in the river rock as old fish food and plant waste decompose down there. Now this thousand gallon tank probably has about 950 gallons in it and that water is on a cycle flowing through these three gutters. We call this an NFT system or nutrient film technique. Water is pumped up from the fish tank to the top of the gutter here and it flows downhill in a five degree angle, passes over all these plant roots a few times a day on a cycle and then returns back to the fish tank. You can take a look at the light up top, very bright high pressure sodium light. See the light is slowly moving on a monorail. It allows the light to cover over all eight feet of gutter. Here we have some examples of the soda bottle hydroponic wick systems. No fish tank water in there. Fish tank water is at a higher pH, around 7.1 to 7.6 depending upon the day. But we drop the pH a little bit of, of uh, tap water using a lemon, bring the, bring the pH down to a six and a half and it's perfect for growing a number of other plants. Right here we have some students with basil, butter lettuce. It's called hydroponics because there's no soil involved, just water. The plants are growing freely in these clay pellets and the water is being aerated by an air stone in this student's project. The water can't get stagnant. You have to constantly dissolve oxygen to that water. And these other, other systems have tubes coming out of them to smaller soda bottles and the students pump those bottles by hand every day and help aerate the water themselves. This system here with the collard greens growing out of it and the cucumbers these are also run off fish tank water. And at the bottom, if I lifted one of these cups up, you'd see the water start to shoot up and out. There's, there's misters down there that constantly 
miss the root of the plant. See the roots are barely even poking out of the bottom here. The roots don't have to grow that, grow that much because you're bringing the nutrient and the water right to them. Here's a flood and drain system. There's no water in it now, but a few times a day, water will flood the top basin from the reservoir below and then drain. pH in this, in this system is set perfectly for peppers and tomatoes. Lower down near six. And you can see these little pepper sprouts are growing in a, a foam medium, another inert substance that eventually degrades and disappears. And we started those little sprouts in little greenhouses on a heating mat at 88 degrees. If we come back here and look at another flood and drain system, we have wheat grass growing in there, spinach, some little seedlings that we're having trouble. We moved them over to this corner today, a whole bunch of basil and dill. Now these systems were set up by the teachers with the help, help of the students and the students will maintain these systems on a daily basis each period somebody has a job to do whether it's checking the pH, the temperature of the water, measuring the amount of dissolved oxygen, measuring the amount of nitrite and nitrates inside the fish tank, taking water samples, moving plants around, And then the second half of the year, the students have enough knowledge then to design and build their own smaller systems, whether they're hydroponic or aquaponic. And we like to take those and distribute them around the school. Last year we put them in the art teacher's room because the art room is usually strategically placed in a part of the building facing the most sun. And we were able to grow those plants faster in a window than we were in here underneath grow lights. We know the grow lights cost money and electricity that's why we're starting this new wind, wind turbine project to see if we can at least offset the electricity from one of the lights here with a wind turbine on top of the, the roof. These are tomato plants. Each one has its own five gallon jug it's growing inside of. The roots are just hanging. That water is delivered to them using a drip system. These tomato plants are just a couple of weeks old, cherry tomatoes. They'll get about five feet tall and we should have plenty of ripe red cherry tomatoes throughout the rest of the school year in about a, in about a month. These are also under a grow light. And that's a quick peek at the systems we've set up. Really peaceful to have the running water in the background in the classroom. It's nice to have fresh plants growing in here. And the water is filtered through a, a pool filter. And all that does is pull out particulate. And that runs just a couple times a day. And I look at the systems up here. And that's about it. If you have questions, please comment.